All right, this is the the Caltech Sub 2000, the cool Caltech Sub 2000 I've been working on, and you got some additions to the project. But why don't I go over that real quick? Open it up. Now this is how the rail from the red line works. We index it by 90 degrees. As you can see, it'll, it'll hold there, hold whatever side you want. <clears throat> but you do need to leave one side empty so it will fold, otherwise it won't. The scope that I've got on here, which is the Target Sports Tactical, uh, it's red and green dot laser. Uh, you'll notice it sticks up there pretty high. And when I got it, I was already kind of knew but that that would be it, and I might not like it. But I've got another gun that it will go on very well. So I also ordered a different type scope. It should be here any day. So for now, we'll just skip this. Get my we'll take this off. And once I decide which one what guns get in which scope, maybe we'll go back and review that. Also got four grip for it that, as you notice, folds. And this, I got it at the gun show the other day. It doesn't have an, a market name on it. I don't know. I don't. I don't know who I got it from. So I don't know what brand it is, but it's got uh, you can carry whatever you think you might want in the bottom here. The extra batteries for your scope or your laser. Uh, you may want to put something else in there. Also, these sides come off and on this laser which is the UTG has a switch on it here where you can run it that way or you can put this on it and then add your switch to the to the handle but I don't like that I don't like the wires hanging off. Uh, just a personal preference. So I'm not going with that. Put this back on here real quick. And I placed it. I shoot a rifle left handed so as you can see, I can just reach up and turn the laser on the, just by pushing here. And I did was able to get this handled up far enough to where it felt pretty comfortable and still be able to accomplish that. So that's some of what you can do. Uh, there's many different kinds of scopes. You can put whatever you want on it. I'm still thinking about a tactical flashlight to put here. I don't know which one yet, so we'll come back and do another video on that. I think the main purpose of this video is just to kind of update y'all what it's starting to look like, what I've done to it. Uh, all this is real easy to assemble. On this particular one, 
the screw comes out and you have to take it all the way out to put it on on this scope you don't you just loosen this up and you, this opens up far enough to just put it over the outside turn it down this laser is small and I picked it because it's inexpensive and I probably said in some of the other videos it's a uh, not a real long range gun anyway so I don't personally see a reason to have a high dollar laser this one will do the job that I'm expecting it to do uh, I'm probably not going to try more than 7500 yards anyway the laser looks to be fine for that of course you can get a green laser, you can get a red laser, you can get blue, you can get one of those options to go either way there's so many different options it's just how much money do you want to spend this one I think was in the $30 range this was in the $25 range the handle that and it fits my hand fine and it since it does come back I mean if you want you can lock it in to that position but that doesn't feel very comfortable to me so that's probably where I'll have it we've also there are rail covers that you could put on here and the rail covers have to go over the Picatinny rail and they just slide over it and you cut it down to size which I will be using to a certain extent but there's some different ones out there I ordered a different type for along here which this doesn't fit. You have to have a Picatinny cover over it for these type to fit. The one I did order is the wrong one so I have to reorder and get the right one in and even then I think it has to be modified a little bit to fit. So when I get the right one I'll do an update on that too. These I'll probably use to cover the rails that I'm not using right now, which will be here and up here. Also, we're gonna I'm gonna do a video on the sling for it. This is a sling that comes for this one. It attaches here. It attaches. Let me get move this over a little bit. It attaches here and here. I will do a video on that. How to do that. Also, this is the extension that goes here. I'm kind of a tall guy, got long arms. This just slides on. But with the upgrade on the site, it's not going to fit. So I have to take off a little here and a little here. And come down into a right here on both sides. It may be about half the width of each side of this and then leaving about this much on this side. That should do it but I'll do a video on that too. Update you on that. So let's put this thing back together real quick give you a quick idea of what it all looks like. That's part of the reason I'm doing this video. I had a couple people at work that I wanted to to have them get an eyeball on it and see where I was going with it. I told them it was pretty close. And they were curious, so I decided I was going to do a video anyway on this. So there you go. That's your gun. I'm going to back off here get a little bit better view. All right, a little bit more. There's your Keltec Sub 2000. Here's your clips. Ten round clip comes with the gun. This is the Glock uh, version. This is also the nine millimeter version of the gun. You also, I picked up a fifteen round, which is 
to me more pre preferable, which the 10 is fine too. To me, this is kind of extravagant. It is fun. It looks cool. I will be using it. I will have a lot of fun with it. But I don't know how much I'll be using it in a, you know, in a de defensive manner. I don't plan on getting into a firefight where you know, I hope I never do. Or something like this is maybe needed. I'm not sure it is. But it dang sure looks cool. It's a cool looking gun. And the 9mm version, you can shoot a lot. Uh, if you want to reload, you can. You're not going to save much money. Uh, but you will save some. At least I, I did the numbers, I crunched them, and you can, depending on where you get your supplies, you can save some money. And I like to reload, so I don't mind doing it. But you can go out and get a box of 9mm for planking for the 10 to $13 range. You can go higher than that, but that's about the average I've seen in this area. So well, there you go. That's my new toy, and it's uh, I think it's a very good uh, gun for bug out bag situation, packing out survival situation, especially if you're on foot. I think I mentioned this already on the show and maybe on the last video. The gun's starting to get kind of heavy now, so you might want to keep that in mind. Uh, I think it's a little heavy for packing out very far. I think I would go with the stock version, or at least keep your stock equipment. You can convert this back easily. It won't, doesn't take very long. Only thing is, when you do convert it back, you're going to have to reset your sights. The stock that comes original with it, you can also modify it, and you can put some rails on the bottom of it. Uh, couple of holes, maybe a little backup plate inside it. Uh, you can put just about any kind of Picatinny rail you want. Uh, just pick out the length that you think will do it. You could even put a scope on top of it. And it won't fold then, but you could, you could put it there. And uh, it's still a short gun. Maybe you don't even want to fold it. It's just so many uh, variations to what people prefer and, and don't prefer. But this is my preference because it is cool looking. It is a badass little gun. It is not very expensive. When you start adding this up to so everything I've done, it does get expensive. But, you know, that's, that's up to you. To me, it, it is an expensive gun. To some people, it wouldn't be, even with the add ons. Just depends on where you are financially. Make your choice, but. Even if you just get the, the basic version of this, I think you'd be happy with it. Uh, you may find that there are just a couple of the changeovers that would, you'll like. You know, Maybe you want to put the extension on the back. Not very expensive. I put the cover here. It's a little softer. It, all, it also, since I'm left-handed, it brings my cheek away a little bit further. It helps me clear uh, the bolt when it comes back. Uh, I don't seem to have any problems either way, but I liked it anyway. I added it on because it does feel a little bit better on the on the face. You know, cold weather, really hot weather. Uh, there's a little uh, cover that goes on the bolt handle here to make it a little bit easier to grip. There's also the cover for the grip here. And I don't remember if I've covered this in the last in any of the other videos, so I'll go over it real quick. The, well, from what I've seen, the covers that you can put on the grip will not allow your clip to fall free easily. It might with this big one. With this one, it won't. So I think that probably covers it for now. Uh, we'll go back over all the other extras that I'm doing and update you pretty soon. Uh, invite you to go 
by my my website, dugoutbagcontent.com. And uh, maybe stop by the podcast at talkshoot.com. At, uh, and we're called Politics and Preppers. So maybe you'll stop by there and see what we're doing there. That's it for now. Thank you.